Now you might say, well, probably the low ball technique works fine when it comes to helping behavior, when it comes to participating in experiments, when it comes to participating in charity runs to support needy children, because in these situations it's hard to step back from our promise, from our public agreement, because it would make us look as a bad person. Well, at first you said you would help the needy children, but if you have to put in some effort, then you say you won't. That's... what kind of person are you? So, it might be that the low ball strategy works fine for seemingly heroic behavior, but what happens when it comes to deviant behavior, to nearly illegal behavior? Situations in which it would be absolutely accepted if we would take a step back, if we would say, no, I won't do this under these circumstances. And this is something that was investigated in the study by Nicolas Guiguin and Alexandre Pasquale in 2014 in their study, low ball and compliance, commitment, even if the request is a deviant one, published in the journal Social Science. I really like this experiment because all in all they had a very good number of participants. They had 580 participants and what they did was in the first experiment in which the participants were 100 fuming pedestrians aged about 30 to 50 and these pedestrians were just asked by a confederate of the experimenter excuse me sir or excuse me madam I see that you are smoking a cigarette and I wonder if you could give me a light for my cigarette. When the smoker agreed, and they all agreed, they were all helpful, then the confederate took out, and now I quote from the study, a large cannabis joint. So at first it looked like a really innocent request. Well, do you have light? But now a large joint comes into play, which at least in France is illegal. So would the lowball technique work under these circumstances as well? When they compared the compliance rate of the lowball condition with a control condition, in the control condition the cannabis joint was visible right from the start, that also under these circumstances the lowball technique worked absolutely fine. Because in the lowball condition, 80% of the smokers were willing to give light. Whereas in the control condition, only 38% agreed to the request. And similar results could be shown in their second experiment, in which they had even more participants. They had 480 pedestrians aged about 20 to 50. And this time it was not about giving light for a cannabis joint, but this time the pedestrians were asked, well, would you do some funny posing for our local magazine? We just need some really funny photos for our magazine. And when they agreed, they were shown the objects with which they should pose. In one condition, it was a bottle with mint syrup which is obviously absolutely harmless and legal. In the second condition, the object with which they should do some funny posing was a beer bottle. This is a little bit more problematic, posing with alcohol in public for a magazine. Well, you can do that, but should you do that? And in the third condition, the object with which they should pose was absinthe which in uh, France is definitely illegal and they also made a sticker on the bottle which said illegal exclamation mark. But would the lowball strategy work under these problematic and highly problematic circumstances as well? Let's first take a look at the results for beer posing. When they compared the lowball condition with the control condition in which the beer bottle was shown right from the start, it turned out that in the low ball condition, 70% agreed to the request, whereas in the control condition, only 
47.5% agreed to the request. So again, lowballing was very effective and similar results could be observed when the participants should be posing with absinthe. In the lowball condition, still 20% of the participants said, yeah, okay, let's do that. Whereas in the control condition, only 7.5% were willing to do the posing. <laughs> 